Hey up lads and lasses, Damfy here, back with some more Infinite Lagrange. So today I want to talk a little bit about um, traveling around the map and the difference between uh, warp speed and cruise and uh, how you can better sort of move about. As you get higher and higher up, this becomes increasingly more important because as the zones unlock, you unlock the bigger ships, the bigger ships are slower, uh, as I'll show now. For an example, uh, just to really show it off, if I show you um, the Rally app, for example, we have 800 cruising speed with a 4,000 warp speed. If you compare that to an ST-59, we have 250 cruise speed and 1,250 uh, warp speed. So considerably slower. Now you can increase uh, this. All ships on their um, propulsion systems will be able to increase uh, their warp speed. If I click on the right thing, they can anyway. Uh, come on, propulsion. There we go, propulsion system. So yeah, we got cruising speed upgrades here and warp speed upgrades. Do get for certain the warp speed upgrades um, at some point, probably after you've done your weapons and your armor on your ships, do think about trying to grab that warp speed upgrades if you have the tech point spare on your ships. Uh, it does help out a little bit. So yeah, on your um, frigates, it is, this concept I'm gonna uh, talk about now is using scout frigates. Now, because frigates have the highest base movement, 1,000 here with 5,000 warp speed, this can be further boosted, uh, increasing their cruising speed even further and their warp speed. So the concept here is that you're using these frigates to get into a position uh, to allow your bigger ships to warp to use that base higher movement speed at any given point. So... In the case of the recon here, we have a thousand one hundred, and um, I'm actually using the Carillion uh, recon because I just like the look of the ship um, a little bit more. So if we see here, we've got increased cruising speed, increased cruising speed, and then I'm starting to work on the warp speed second. Now the reason this is important is because the cruising speed is when a ship doesn't have like a target or lock for its warp. So for example. This uh, recon here, which is a single Carillion, and that's all you need, uh, won't warp anywhere unless there's a target lock. So if I transfer this guy over here, you'll see that he's uh, using his base cruise speed, which thankfully in this case is pretty fast. So it's not too bad. So for an example, to further iterate this, we have test A. Now this is an ST-59. This is going to take 13 minutes and 18 seconds seconds to get from here to here. And that's because it has no uh, target to sort of scout for it, to lock on and use its warp function. Now, once my recon arrives back over here, I have another ST-59 and I'm going to send it over here. And that's going to use warp. And this is due to the fact that the recon's in position and it's giving you a lock position for your warp. Um, so 20 seconds and I'll show you and you'll see that the, the like the difference in time it will take to get here is huge so 10 seconds 8 7 6 5 4 3 there we go test B exactly the same 5 minutes 42 seconds that's just under half it's about uh, 60 odd percent uh, more efficient that way. So just as a base. Now there is a third movement and that's if you use the reinforce. So if we use reinforce now, test C, it's another ST-59. And you can see 36 seconds. So this is where it becomes really important to use these recon ships because as your ships get larger and the cruise speed decreases the warp speed is all you've got to go on so you need to try and use this um, function of using uh, recon ships as points for other ships to warp to and to uh, reinforce to now at base you can reinforce four ships 
There is an outpost uh, that allows you to reinforce an additional, uh, sorry, a base you can reinforce five ships. There is an outpost that will let you reinforce an additional four ships. So you can have nine ships uh, in a fleet to reinforce. It's pretty useful because uh, nine ships, that's pretty much uh, five CV3000s and four ST59s. And that's roughly around 400 CP. It might be a bit over. You might only be able to run four carriers and four um, uh, battle cruisers for that. Well, ST-59s anyway, because of the command point. I'm not going to go too deep into the command points because all the ships are different. The ST-59s, like 29 command points. The Constantine's 35, I think, or something like that. So I won't go too much into that. As you can see here, this guy's just going to slow boat his entire way. Once this um, ST-59 hits the edge of my, um, uh, I guess, operation for my base here, it will uh, go into warp and that will increase its speed and that's why you need to be uh, doing this. Something quickly to note though, is that if you move this recon out of this uh, area at any point, this guy will start slow boating. He will drop out of warp and it will slow boat. So you may need to make sure that you do not do that whatsoever. It's very, very important that if you are trying to get your ship from A to B as quickly as possible, that you keep this ship, uh, keep, sorry, keep the recon within the, out, uh, the area that the new ship's going to arrive at. Now, there are other ways. Uh, you don't necessarily need... Um, a recon to do this you can use outposts to do this mining platforms also work as warp points um, cities themselves also work as outposts uh, sorry as warp points and on top of that allied bases allied outposts allied uh, mining platforms will also allow you to travel at warp speed so here we go. We can see that he's now entering warp and he's going considerably faster and arriving and will arrive much, much faster than the base um, ST-59 as it's cruising. I use the ST-59 because it's a really, really slow ship, so it exaggerates this uh, importance of using uh, the likes of a recon to get around. Now... There is a limit on how far ships can fly. It's uh, at base 1500. I'm not quite sure exactly how much that is in terms of like total distance. But what I can tell you is once it lands, you could set up a second recon somewhere else and you can jump again and use the warp again. So you can actually go further than the, the maximum fly distance that way. And uh, if you if you need to, like you're in uh, this region, for example, but you want to get down into this region here, you will almost certainly need to. You could probably jump from my base, which is about there. I think around here will be your max flight uh, range. So you'd set up a recon over here, and then you would set up another recon over here, warp to this one, warp to this one, or reinforce to that one, and reinforce to the next one. Now the reinforce is very, very useful. The reinforce is the best way to move your uh, large mining ships about. If you're using large or any of the mining sh ships, uh, to be honest, they're all very, very slow. So using reinforce to get you into a position where you want to build an outpost, for an example. So for example, uh, these rocks over here, they look like they'd be good to mine or you know, you're building on a uh, ship maintenance facility or something like uh, that. You could send your recon over, then reinforce your miner into it, and then build the outpost, and it will uh, save you a lot of time on travel. As you can see here, this ST-59 has arrived well, well ahead of the uh, cruising ST-59. So that's the basics of warp. Um, again, there's some slight more advanced concepts using uh, recon uh, jumping. Uh, so, for example, I'll show you now. Once this ST-59 hits uh, seven seconds, this is test B, I'll warp him over to the outpost and you'll see that he'll actually warp and not cruise uh, once he gets out of the operational area. But yeah, he's stopped now. If I come over here, transfer, test B, 38 minutes, um, 
So yeah, it's, it's definitely much, much faster to do it this way. If you, uh, for example, uh, because the uh, recon has now got an ST-59, if I plop that down there and it's outside of the outpost, if I uh, move over here and hit transfer, use the recon one, which has got a um, uh, an ST-59 in it, you'll see it will bounce off the outpost to try and get there. So there's the 38 minutes and the two minutes extra travel time to get down there. If I go direct, you'll see it's two hours, 27 minutes. That's because it will go in cruise to get over there. So you need to make sure that your sailing route always has places you can try and bounce off warp-wise either by making them yourself with recon ships uh, because they're faster, so their cruise speed will allow them to get into the position and then warp uh, the rest of your fleet, or uh, again, bounce off uh, the outpost like in this case. So that's just to show you like how you can sort of bounce between um, an outpost or another recon ship and just keep bouncing around and uh, until you jump to the position that you want to be in if it's outside of your uh, total flight range. So I hope you found that useful. I've also found out uh, that the um, crit stuff, right? So this is directly from the devs. Crit rate, the rate of causing an extra damage in an attack. Your usual damage is 100 and the crit rate is uh, is a causing of a damage of 150. So base crit damage is 50%. The, uh, yeah, so crit damage is the extra damage caused by crit. We don't know what the base crit rates are on ships. They're not noted, so I can't tell you like how often something's gonna crit or anything like that, uh, or what weapon systems are based off crit. What I have, at least found out now is that crits don't affect the subsystems so crits aren't subsystem damage uh, so that does seem to be uh, set more onto specific ships do do ship uh, subsystem damage and fighters do subsystem damage uh, well several of them do and it does state uh, which ones do and don't so that's quite interesting i've also found out about target priorities Different ships have different target priorities. One ship will attack ships according to the built-in priority list. It's not just as simple as the enemy rows. So if a target priority is one, say it's a uh, frigate and it's in the middle row, target priority two is uh, say a destroyer and it's in the front row, the ship should be attacking uh, the frigate in the mid row before it attacks the destroyer. These are from the devs. I will be testing these out a bit more to try and get you some better numbers on the crit and uh, especially target priorities because they're very important. It's basically how we thought target priorities worked in the first place, so it's not too bad. But uh, we just want to double check everything and test everything and I'll have a video out for you guys on crit and on target priorities and how to build a fleet around target priorities when you know what enemy fleets are. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It helps me out, it helps the channel out. Hope you found this informative and helpful and have a good one guys. I will catch you next time.